help with my Mazda RX 323 resto videos. Um, in this chapter we uh, fit up the engine and play around with the engine mounts. I try to fit the exhaust that I've got for this thing and as you'll see it doesn't really fit. Um, I also modify the radiator, um, fab up some brackets for the radiator and get that all installed. So it's a bit of a long one but I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I've just bolted in the, the gear stick. There's only three 10 mil screws under here. So now, one, two, three, four, five, in reverse. So I've got a five speed gearbox all the bolted off. I'm going to have to just maybe trim this just a little bit more around here just to tidy it up a bit. And then I'll get a, um, you can buy universal gaiters for gear sticks that will just screw onto the tunnel here and just screw through and maybe even pick up some of the existing holes. So, so I've got the gears and the three pedals now. So manual conversion just about done. All I've got to do now is get the clutch slave cylinder and clutch master cylinder and the line that runs between the two, which isn't very big. And the manual to auto conversion is done. So the next thing I do is get, is get the exhaust in. So this is the exhaust that I got with the car. As you can see, it's four pipes into one turbo muffler. And so this is out of an RX3. So this is going to be interesting to see how it goes going in the 323. And yes, that's my daughter's beautiful Mustang pedal car. I've just rolled the exhaust under the car. You can see it there on the little roll the trolley thing. And there it is there. So there's not much clearance. To get on the engine. So I've come across my first issue. Um, I've got the exhaust on. It's bolted on, as you can see, and because it's a four-port motor, I've got some clearance issues here between the front pipes and just there. It's hitting the uh, steering box. So there's a couple options I could probably do. Uh, one is I pull the exhaust back off and maybe squash in the exhaust just a little bit and just gives a couple of mils of room but I'm sure you can see here I've taken the engine mounts off as well I can move the engine over just a, a little bit and that would give me enough clearance as well so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that because then the engine mount this bracket here um, it seems to be a little bit different this seems to be a little bit higher and I reckon if that was up a bit, um, it might lower the engine down a bit more just to give it a bit more clearance. And I think that that would be a, enough to give me enough clearance to get the engine in properly. So I'm going to investigate um, a new front bracket on the engine, this bit here. So there we go. Got another package today. Love getting packaged. <laughs> Clutch slave cylinder. There's not one on the car at the moment. Brand new, beautiful. This is all from Pilgrim. I'll go 
with my new engine mount here is to see how high these are. What are they? 36 mils. The original Mazda ones, which are 30 mil. Anyhow, let's get them in. Okay, so I've I fitted up those um, new engine mounts I just got. Um, and I've had a bit of a rethink about how I'm going to do the exhaust. As you remember, as I said before, it was just touching on this side against the steering box and um, on the idler arm. So what I think I might do, because um, I've also popped back in the cross member as well underneath, and I thought, I thought to myself, if I lower it down just a bit, it will give me a bit more clearance, but if I lower it down too much, it's going to hit on the, um, this cross member. So I can't lower it down too far, just the way it sits, and it does sit really good in this position right now. So what I might do is um, I will get a new exhaust made up. So I think that's the best and easiest option just to, um, if, they, if I get one of the, it's a bit out of my league doing that type of fabricating. So I'll just go to an exhaust place and get them to fab up um, exhaust manifold down through the exhaust. And it wasn't really fitting really tight underneath the car anyway, the uh, exhaust system. So I think I'll go that way. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do now is fab up the radiator supports. Um, I'll mount it all up and see what I need to do to get it fit in this hole. Aluminium radiator. Okay, um, you see I've cut off the bracket just there and just trimmed back all the rest of the welds. It was just, it was just tacked on this other bracket which was on the side. I'll just cut that off. It's left this side support here. So now we'll try and fit it back in the car and see how we go. I was just wondering how I was going to mount this radiator. I thought I was going to have to make some, some brackets, but I just realised now, once it sits this far in, it can actually come off the, the support panels here, and there's, there's two mounts already on this radiator. I can just make up a bracket to join these two things here, and it's job done. It's actually easy, a lot easier than I, than I thought. And the thermo fan can then mount up. Thermo fan even fits too. Wow, that is amazing. So that's going to clear the engine. Give me some space. Doesn't hit here, there's heaps of room. Um, I might just have to slot the red fan housing just there, but that's no big deal. Move the bracket over there, and that can mount over there, and to there. Job done. <laughs>
I'm going to do this is so this is the um, the car here the headlights go here and here this is um, opening this is the radiator support part just down there with the two bolts are on there one there this is the radiator and the cooler goes under here so what I'm going to do I'm going to use these bits like this like this and then put these brackets on like this and like that that's four mil plate, so that should be well strong enough. It'll go on like that, and then like that. So then I'll just put the bracket there, and then weld that on there, and that on there, on there, and on there. Because there's a support holes are just there on the radiator. Once I've done that, weld it all up. Job done. Okay, so we're here at Mum and Dad's house. My dad's got a nice drill press, so I just drilled my first hole. I've just set I set the height of this up so it's nice and close to the drill, and um, just drilled just a small pile hole. This is through all four plates for the um, radio support mount. I just drilled a small pile hole through there, um, and now I'm going to drill a bigger hole to match. So the bolt go through because this bit here will bolt onto the radiator and then I'll weld these plate bits on to these which will then bolt onto the car so we'll do some more so I've got the bolt and I'm just got to make sure the drill is the right size which it is so now I'll drill through the plates There we have it, I've drilled through, and I'm just checking to make sure the bolt goes through nicely, and it does. So it's that bit These done. are the plates that are going to go onto the body, and as you can see I've already center punched exactly where it needs to drill, so I'll drill now um, a few small pilot holes in here, and then I'll go out to the bigger holes. You always drill a small hole first, um, just makes it easier on the drills. There we go, I've drilled the four small holes using the drill press. And now it's time to just make them the bigger size. I think they're about 8mm, 6 8mm. There we go, all four done. As you can see, that machine, it goes through them like butter. It's unbelievably good. It's so much easier than using a hand drill. Alright, we'll go fit them up to the car now, bolt them up and then pull the plates to the radiator and then get the MIG out. Okay, so I've bolted up the brackets to the radiator support panel, just there. Okay, so these are the radiator brackets. So I've just trimmed them off the edge just so they fit a bit and they're still hot. Um, that's all fine, I just bolted them all together so it's easier to do. So there they are. They're ready to be tacked on now when they cool down. So I've got the radiator just sitting here just gently. I've got the jack just supporting it gently. Just a bit of foam underneath here just to give a bit of a gap onto there. So you can see I've got them now ready to go. So I'll just tack them now with the MIG. And then the radio will be nearly ready to set to go. Just got to check and make sure the gap's all nice and straight around there. And then it should be right to weld in. So that's it, that's my radiator support brackets. Um, so I welded along there, along there, along there, along there, and out. They're still hot, out, and on both sides as well. Now I've cleaned up all the welds, um, so you couldn't see how bad my welding was. So it was pretty rubbish, but anyhow, it's all done, they're nice and secure. Um, now to add them to the car. So there we have it. The radiator is now in position with the bracket. Fits perfectly um, with a nice bit of gap. Around through here, down the sides, down that side. 
Oh, there's a nice gap. But I guess if you pull away and have a look. Yeah, that, that cooler hangs down pretty low, but the car is lowered, so no big deal. Um, well, that's it for this episode. I um, hope you enjoyed it. I'm um, sorry, it's a bit of a long one, but um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun doing this one, especially doing the fabricating. It's probably the best part of it. And I'll see you in the next episode.